Heal epicondylosis is to a large extent a problem with how people do their pull-ups. Now what happens when people do their pull-ups? If you're doing a proper pull-up and you're pulling first from your shoulder blades, right? You're going to pull first from your shoulder blades, chest is going to hit, but look where my elbows are. My elbows are back. More of a proper pull-up. Now what people tend to do is because they don't have scapulothoracic joints. So again, if I ask you to do a controlled articular rotation of your scapulothoracic joint, and I start to see this kind of movement, where the person is using their spine to falsely create a scapulothoracic joint, or if I get them to internally rotate at the glenohumeral joint, I get them falsely internally rotating, demonstrating to me that they don't have a glenohumeral joint. Those people, when asked to do a pull-up, will be unable to keep their arms back. So what ends up happening is the pull-up looks more like this, with the arms forward. Now, if I'm pulling up with my arms forward, I've created a moment arm, whereby my body weight is far away from the point which is supporting my body weight, which is going to be my medium of conduct. So, when you have crossfitter, it happens a lot because they get right into a kip before they understand how to use their scapula, it's not only them. A lot of people doing pull-ups, they're unable to bring their shoulder blades back because they don't have good shoulder blade mobility. In addition, because they can't move their shoulder blade in relation to their thoracic cage, they're unable to generate strength from their scapula. And when that happens, instead of having the arm back here, it's going to start to drift forward. If you drift forward, you're hinging all of your body weight on your medial epicondyle. In time, that tendon will become degenerated. So medial epicondylosis for most training clients is probably a problem with scapulothoracic dissociation to start. Now you can tell people all you want, keep your arms back. And that's usually what people will do. And you can't keep your arms back, so therefore just do you know, the good old scapula type pull-ups. But that's not correcting the problem. Giving someone another exercise to downgrade the intensity of the exercise you're telling them to do is never a proper solution. The proper solution, if someone can't achieve something, is to look at the individual articulations utilized for that motion. Do they have independent control of each of those articulations? If they don't, don't give them a regression uh, exercise to get them to that exercise. Never train someone to be able to do the movement. Train the articulations to be able to give the person the permission or the prerequisites to achieve the motion and then get them to practice the movement. Does that make sense? So people, if they don't have the ability to do that, a lot of people say, well, just get on a band. Get on a band and you just keep going and you'll keep, you'll eventually you'll get there. Yeah, you'll get there, but if your scapula is not able to independently move on your thoracic cage, however you get there, you'll get there by compensating and some other tissue will end up becoming pathological. Does that make sense? So you correct the articulation doing the movement. Don't correct the movement. 